Now, let's focus on the recovery phase of the resilience process. Recovery has been defined as the process of harmonizing your current state with the state required for a given task. Your state includes the resources that were listed on the y-axis of the model. This could be your satisfaction with work-life balance, your energy levels, skills, well-being, and so on. In other words, recovery is returning to your baseline. When we think about physical recovery, the steps are pretty obvious. You know, take a break or scale back the intensity of whatever you're doing. But when we think about mental or emotional recovery, the process can be more frustrating. It's harder to think about those steps that you need to take to move forward. And for me, I struggled with this when I was a postdoc after I received a manuscript rejection. I'm sure many of us can relate to your experience, Celine. After the first few days or weeks after your rejection, what did recovery look like for you? Yeah, it definitely took some time for me to recover. Uh, for the first few days after receiving a manuscript rejection, I felt like an imposter in a room full of colleagues. I doubted myself, lacked confidence, and really just had a hard time bouncing back. I went through the reviewer's comments with my PI, brainstormed responses with my lab mates, and of course relieved some stress by going for a run with my dog. Eventually, I submitted my manuscript to a different journal where it was published. Congratulations. Imagine when you have felt doubtful, unsure of your progress, or burnt out related to something important to you. It might be from a rejected manuscript, but it could also be from an unproductive meeting with your PI or a failed job search. How did you recover from that stressor? What steps did you take to recover? Were these constructive? Did they enhance your recovery? Or were they destructive? Did they deter your recovery? Take a minute to reflect and write it down in the box below. This conversation brings up such a great point. Recovery is very personal. The strategies that we talk about here might not be what works best for you. It takes time to recover and I know that it can be a frustrating process. What works for me might not work for you. As I've transitioned into my postdoc, I've realized that the strategies I used as a grad student might not be what I need as a postdoc. Not only are the experiences and environments different, but I've also grown and I need different support now. It makes sense when I think about it and I'm proud of myself for the work I've done, but it's kind of frustrating. I thought I had it figured out. Mm -hmm. I felt the same way when I transitioned out of my postdoc and into this position. So far, we've been thinking about just one stressor, but we all know that in reality, there are many factors in our personal and professional lives that can affect how we recover we likely have those compounding stressors. Have you experienced the same stressor more than once? Was there a difference in your recovery? If you think back, were there other compounding stressors that might have affected your recovery? In addition, your recovery period may vary for different stressors. Think about how your recovery process might differ if you experience a rejected manuscript, a family illness, or a stressful job search. You might also respond differently to a stressor that you were prepared for compared to an unexpected stressor. Celine, how would you picture these different recoveries would look in our model of resilience? Many variables can be different, including you know, the slope of the line, the length of the recovery period, and the linearity of the recovery period. All of these variables contribute to the unpredictable nature that recovery can have. If we looked at how everyone recovers from a manuscript rejection, for example, those recovery periods might look quite different. What's the difference in behavior that leads to different recovery periods? What's driving those differences? Share your thoughts in the discussion forum below. Our recovery periods might look different if we think about when we actually start to recover. Recovery doesn't occur automatically, even when the stressor is gone and thinking about and reliving that experience may actually interfere with the recovery process. But sometimes, recovery can actually begin while the stressor is still present. This idea leads us to the question, can one recover faster or more effectively with practice? Can we have challenges that stress us out before but don't any longer? This week, we hope that you will recognize the strategies you already use to recover explore additional strategies, and practice them the next time you face a stressor.